Guido, get it out of my face. <laughs> What's up, dude? What up? With a 2.3 liter TVS supercharger. Uh, this has the T56 with the uh, Magnum XL with the 266 first gear. All right, guys, so we're out here at a Holly Ford Fest. It's the first day, which is actually loading day. We finished setting up everything, our paddock area. Isaac's got some scooters up. What I'm gonna show you guys today is every single drift Mustang at Holly Ford Fest 2024. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. All right, first up here, we've got Alejo and his S197. What's up, dude? What up? Hey, uh, so talk to me about your car. We've already talked about it a little bit. I kind of yeah. know the ins and outs, um, but you got a couple extra things that I don't have on mine. So mm -hmm. just talking through your car. Uh, so it's a 2007 GT. Uh, it's got an on three turbo kit with a 70 mil turbo. Um, regular 8.8 rear end. It's got 410 gears, welded diff. I'm running the Scotty D dual caliper setup with the Scott E.D. lines to um, Drift HQ handbrake. It's all standalone, so I don't have to deal with any of the inline stuff. Um, for angle, I'm running extended lowers with modified knuckles and then just stock steering. What else? Uh, I guess interior, we've got. Interior, um, I'm running an OMP seat with a d and wheel setup and then race quip harness because I needed that for this event. So for the most part, I mean, our cars are pretty similar, except that you're running a turbo kit. Yeah. Show us that, let's see the turbo kit. Okay. Here we've got the, uh, the Had dump. to do the hood dump. Yep. I, ripped off, I ripped off the downpipe over a speed bump. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna throw. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go up, not down. Said, yeah, I wanted the hoods out the flame. Engine base kind of messy, but gets the job done. That is a, this is what I need, man. I need some turbo. I need some boost yeah, in do. my life. You do. Okay, so I, I forgot what the stock Mustang GT horsepower is. Uh, I always say like, it's like three, it's like 300. Like roughly, yeah. Yeah, it feels like 230. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me on my butt dyno. Yeah. What are you putting down with the uh, on three turbo kit? With the current tune, I'm pushing seven PSI. So that should put me mid 400s. Um, if I crank the boost up to nine PSI, which I might do this event, I don't know, then I should be cracking 500. And that's all on pump gas, 93? Yep, 91. 91? Yeah. Oh, wow, 91. Is 90, that... 93 is harder to find over where I'm at, so I decided to just say screw it, go 91, that way I can fill up anywhere. Okay, do they have 93 here in Kentucky? Yeah, they have more 93 than they have 91, because I pulled up to a gas station to fill up, I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah, in Texas it's 93 or E. Yeah. That, in Florida, it was 93. So my other Mustang is on 93. Yeah, the Mustang's on 93. Yep. And your other Mustang is? It's a 2006 uh, four liter V6 Mustang, but it's wide body and bagged. Um, and I'm actually currently in the process of doing the first Barra swap in the country on this model Mustang. That's awesome, dude. I think it's gonna rip once it's done. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. Should be should be around 1,100 horse by the time I'm done. Holy with it. cow! And it'll, that's it'll be a show car. It'll be a fast show car. A fast show car, yep. but not a, a party car. Correct. What's uh, what are the next plans for this S197? Over the winter, um, probably gonna do a rear mounted setup because where the turbo sits, I've already gone through one fan because the turbo melts it. Oh um, man. So rear mounted setup. I'm gonna cut out the whole trunk, do a full tubular rear. I'll probably do a front bash bar um, to switch it up, and maybe a cage start to go more for a pro spec just because okay are you thinking about doing the cage kits i don't know i have a fab guy back home um, gotcha i'm gonna see what it would cost for him to do it or if it'd be cheaper for me to just buy an already built cage and then have him do the fab work to put it in gotcha well man um this is known as the event of we're fighting off the rain mm -hmm. uh we're supposed to get some rain here in the next couple of hours so hopefully we're able to see you drift tomorrow hope so and uh, i'll show all that in today's video as well where can uh, people find you and your show car build I'm sorry? Where can people find you and your show car build? Um, pretty much Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all Sky the S197. Sky the S197. Alejo, I appreciate yeah. you so much. No problem, thank you. All right, here we've got 
a Roush Mustang that belongs to my boy Christian here. What's up, brother? How's it going? All right, talk to me. What are we looking at here? What year? Uh, we are looking at a 16 uh, RS3 packaged Ford Mustang with a 2.3 liter TVS supercharger. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna jump right into it. Pop the yep. hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, look at that right there. Nice big old Roush supercharger. So Gen 3 Coyote, Roush supercharger. Uh, Gen 2 Coyote. Gen 2 Coyote. Uh, it's got rods, pistons in it, balanced bottom end. It's really about all done motor, motor wise. Well, uh, what's it putting down to the wheels? Uh, 727 is the rated horsepower for the kit. Okay. So the front bumper, everything comes, that's part of the Roush kit, right? Yep, front bumper, rear bumper, side skirts, and then it's got all some interior bits and pieces that are all Roush to it as well. And that hood scoop is FDF, is that what FDF, I saw? FDF, yep. Nice, do you have uh, overheating issues with this? Uh, no, just with the top mounted blower, it does get hot. Right, you wanna get as much heat out of it? Yep. Okay, where are we running for angle? Uh, we are running the Justin Pollock Hotline Performance Angle Kit. And coilovers, you said? Field Feel? coilovers in the front with uh, 12K front springs and then BC rear coilovers with uh, 14K rear springs. Nice. I think we spoke earlier about the cage. Yep. And this is probably one of my favorite cages I've seen in a car. Yeah, this is cage done by a local guy in Des Moines, Iowa. Had it kind of custom built to uh, still fit door panels, dash and everything. And it's all FD legal, so it still has intrusion bars. Yeah, this is really nice work. Fire suppression, everything the past uh, Formula Drift Pro-Am. Yeah, dude, super clean. Still has AC? No AC, just uh, heat. Just heat? Yep. Sound system? Sound system's still there. It's got the uh, sync touch screen and all that stuff to it. So this is, is a street legal? You drive it's on the street? It's a street legal, yep. Yeah, that's a clean looking car. It's fun to drive, that's for sure. Any bash bars in the front, rear? Uh, all factory crash bar system to it still. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, I mean, I don't want to use the word simple, but. It is. It's, it, <laughs> yeah, there's no other word I can really use other than it's a simple seat time car. But again, not simple, right? So yep. It's a Roush. <laughs> Yeah, man, beautiful, clean car. Thank you. Only 13,000 miles on it. Only 13,000 miles, this thing's brand new. Is that a fire suppression system in there? Yep, fire suppression system, you need it to have uh, past Formula Drift Pro-Am tech laws. And right there is our ND Pro-Am series Formula Drift Pass on the cage. Right there, yep, yep. there you go. Certified the car is good to pass this, at least ND Drift's Formula Drift rule book. Yeah, that's a party car. Yeah. Just like I told Alejo in the S197, hopefully you guys get to drift today and the hurricane doesn't bring too much rain for us. Hopefully, let's keep wishing it pushes east. Yeah, I hope, man. <laughs> it's like all the models show it hitting like right above us and I'm like, no, don't do that. Parking right on top of us, it's yeah. gonna suck, but. All right, man, I appreciate you so much. Yeah, Let's no take problem. a look at Turtle's car over here. Isaac. What's the up? homie, what's up, dude? All right, man, talk to me about your car. So, like you explained, we have the RTR, full RTR uh, accent package, I guess you could say. So I got the RTR grill, upper and lower grill. Got the RTR splitter. And for, as for RTR stuff, that's pretty much it. Oh, actually, some RTR stickers on the windshield as well. Uh, I have fiberglass mafia wide body, which I also customized a little bit because this piece still has a big old piece that comes down here. I cut it so that it, I could make the bumper pretty quick uh, to be able to take take off, put on and take off. Gotcha. Um, I have a Boss 302 bumper bar. Okay. So instead of having the like stock bumper crash support, whatever it's called, is a Boss 302 bumper bar. And then I got a, I got a, I think it's Cervini's? It's a fiberglass uh, hood. 
uh, this and this have been sent to me by CJ Pony Parts, so thank you to them. Yeah, let's talk about what's under the hood. I know it's a coyote. Yes, it is um, a... But you've changed a few different things from what comes factory with them. Yes, yes I have. So I, I added in the Boss 302 intake, the Mishimoto three-row radiator with the Ford Performance upgraded fan um, with, a, with the strut bar. Those are also thanks to CJ Pony Parts. Nice. And then I have my k and cold air intake. Thank you to k and for sending that out to me. And then as for this stuff, you see a whole bunch of rust in my fender. That's actually off of a spare chassis that I have that caught on fire. So I didn't get a chance to paint that. And you're made it to what kind of transmission? Uh, this has the T56 with the uh, Magnum XL with the 266 first gear. So it's a super tall gear back with the stock gears that I had in the diff. It was like a, my first gear could go up to 60 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, that's no good for drifting. I went ahead and swapped it out for 488 gears in the differential. So this thing rips like no other. Yeah, it does. I mean, I can attest to that. It's yeah. a lot easier to drift than my car. 100%. All right. That's dope. What about the inside? What are we looking at? Uh, inside we got... So inside we have the Status Racing Turismo seat with my custom logo embroidered in there. And I got the carbon fiber pattern out here with the green status and the kiwi green, I think this is what this is called, on the outside. What uh, what half gauge is this? So this is Maximum Motorsports uh, roll bar. Okay, and it's a direct bolt-in? Yeah. Yeah, super easy application. Very much so, yes. And I see the Scotty D handbrake there. I got the Scotty D handbrake with the tri with the Trimic uh, shift ball. We got the NRG quick disconnect hub for the steering wheel, along with the quick disconnect uh, steering wheel itself. Um, I have also, I'm gonna hop onto the other side so I can show you. Yeah, for sure. I also have a random Amazon bike rack for my steering wheel. <laughs> so Whatever works, right? Yeah, I got this idea from Edwin. Edwin Flores? Yeah, Heck back yeah. home. Shout uh, out to he, Edwin. He gave me this idea, so uh, he has pretty much, it's a little bit smaller, and the hook's a little bit smaller, but he gave me this idea because he's like, he's like, yeah, that's where I put my wheel. Yeah, I'm going to have to copy you, except I still have my visors in mind. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah, take no, my I have to out. take out the visors. This I took out because yeah, the I lights wouldn't turn off. Oh, okay, I have my lights on there too. Yeah, no, the lights wouldn't turn off. They were actually, in, I think they're actually in the trailer. Okay, dope. What about out back? Let's look out back. Out back. So out back, I have some more RTR stuff. I have the RTR uh, wing. I have the RTR black blackout panel. And then I have some 2013 through 14 style tail lights from CJ Pony Parts as well. Yeah, this is definitely on the later S187, my favorite taillight style, I love those. Yes, 100%. And the RTR deck lid panel. Yeah. Shout out to the boys at RTR. And then I also have a tow hitch, along with an MBRP uh, axle back exhaust. I don't remember what, what mid pipe I have, I think it's an X pipe, but I don't remember who made it. And then I have long tube headers from BBK. Yeah, your car is definitely one of the loudest that I've heard in a very long time. I want to make it louder. So far, actually, all these three cars that we've just looked at have been pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, hopefully the rain doesn't stop us and we can see you shred, bro. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's not going to stop me. That's not going to stop you. Let's go. On to the next. Day, and it's raining pretty heavy. Some of the cars are put away. Um, they cut the first drift session. Hopefully it dries up by the evening time, but I'm going to continue to show you guys these sick drift cars. Uh, this car right here is probably one of my favorites in terms of styling. Uh, spoke to the owner and it's actually a uh, Viper green color. Super sick car. And it's a uh, stock two valve, so he's putting in some work with it. Over here, we got another new edge as well. Continue to walk the pits here. This S197 belongs to Matt Glasscock. I did a full video interview with him. So you guys make sure to check out that video. There's a lot that goes into this car. Give you a little sneak peek here. It's powered by a Godzilla motor. Yeah, but that is a, for the most part, a prospect build. He just wants to make some changes to it. Over here, the Justin Bauer team, Justin Bauer Motorsports. 
love the Shelby front end and the Super Snake Hood on this one. In the background, you might hear the autocross going on. Looks like to be an SN95, again, covered, protecting it from the rain. Look over here. You guys see the conditions out here? All the water's pulling up. This teal, I think I just, I'm just a sucker for teal, but I like how he's rocking the OG S197 GT500 rear wheels painted white. Got the RTR grill lights. Super clean, super simple. And over here, something you don't really see, this car is insane, a Fox body. I mean, there's tons of Fox bodies out here, but this one's really clean and well done. I like the way he did to it, or she. Still haven't met the owners. The Yakima roof racks, a nice touch. Take a little closer look. side here. Looks like it has a uh, Meyer suspension parts on it. I know he makes a lot of autocross and road racing parts. Love the livery too. Got the big old spoiler Celine style. Another S550. Looks like it has the RTR over fenders on it. Definitely one of my favorite uh, fender flare kit, over fender kits. I like how he's got the older Mustang GT emblem too. Super cool. And again, white wheels, way to go. That's my favorite. Got another one with the car cover. And hopefully you'll be able to see some of these cars after uh, we get on the track. SN95. Another clean car. Love how low it is. This car, again, this owner's done really good work to it. Still has the full interior, really comfortable car. Orange is my favorite color. So definitely drawn to this one again, white wheels. That's the move. No spoiler. A lot of people like the no spoiler look. Clean car. Got another 5.0 tucked away over here. This one's definitely seen some action. Gold wheels, big angle kit. Clean car. Nice and simple. Let's see what's going on around back. Yeah, that was a clean car. I can see the cage inside of it. Kind of hard to see with all the rain. got Davey Peoples in his Mustang Dark Horse Drift car. He just finished this car for this event. 
Might be able to get a full-blown interview with him tomorrow to get all the details. Still finishing it up. And just to give you an idea of how much rain there is. Real deep. Yep, they're wrapping it up. Hopefully we see this thing in action here soon. Now you can't do a video with all the drift cars without, without showing the boys, RTR drift team. Looks like they have Ben Hobson's car and Vaughn's demo car out here as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Again, gotta protect all the cars from the rain. Got the windows covered up, protecting it from the wind. This is the year of the hurricane. Yellow splash, it's my favorite color. A Vaughn's car over here. Again, protecting it from the rain, keeping the tent down from the wind. It's not too bad right now. I do love a clean S197. Got that carbon fiber over fenders, again, white wheels. Some of these cleaner cars are proof you don't need a, a super crazy livery for it to look good. Not me, I, I did a crazy livery on mine. Check out the front of Vaughn's, Vaughn's car here. The new RTR hood scoop. I love that. It's one of my favorite touches on the new cars. They should be out ripping these cars uh, Saturday, tomorrow. Maybe this one tonight, we'll see what happens. So I was hoping to show you guys a lot more action by today, but because of the rain and the conditions and the state of the track, they've been uh, just kind of playing it by ear. It was raining really hard earlier. They decided not to do the drifting portion. So hopefully uh, in the evening session, they'll be allowed to go out. And if not, they're still tomorrow and the forecast is looking a lot better for tomorrow than it is right now. So I think they had about 30 drifters signed up and we're looking at close, uh, close to 15, 20 people that actually showed up. Because uh, a lot of people drive across the country to come to this event. If you can't drive, it kind of loses the point. So, but other than that, everybody's in really good spirits. Everybody's hanging out, playing music, sharing snacks. Um, but yeah, as more cars come out and get uncovered, I'll continue to show them to you, and hopefully, we can finish off the video with a bang. Over here, we got a couple of SN95s, rocking the old school Hoonigan Industries Jim Connor license plate, kill all tires see that much around anymore. Got the American flag waving on the roof. That's a nice touch. Definitely a party car. Again, wingless. It says Amber, it might be female driven. I'm not sure. Again, I'm still meeting everybody. Sticker bomb fender on this SN95. Again, spoilerless. With all the SN95s, I also want to point out everyone that I've spoken to, if you want to get into drifting, they're still rocking a stock factory two valve V8, uh, just like I'm rocking a stock three valve in my S197 and it's plenty to get into drifting without spending a ton of money. So if you want to get into it, you want to get into a Mustang, it's definitely one of the options to get into that's um, cost effective.
first drift session is about to go down. It's Saturday. They got Bigfoot out there. The RTR drift team just finished doing their donuts around that behemoth of a truck. We got all the drifters lined up. Some of these I've already shown, but we're just going down the line. Got the boys filming. Guido, get it out of my face. <laughs> it's my thing. That's your thing. SN95. Sky is S197. Turbo, three valve. Fox body. This one, S197, I haven't seen yet. Oh yeah, this thing is done up, brother. Huh? This thing is done up. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we got the same car for the most part. Oh, do we? Yep. Yeah. That looks like a competition orange S197. And the SN95 from yesterday. So this seems to be the lineup for the day. So uh, let's get some action in them.
All right, guys, that's a wrap for Holly Ford Fest 2024. It was a wet one. It was my first Ford Fest, and I can't begin to thank anybody, everybody enough for welcoming us. And honestly, we just had a good time despite all the rain and delays and drifting. As I look back at the event now, I think that the rain was sort of a blessing in disguise for us because we actually got to hang out with one another and get to know each other on a much deeper level. And we learned a lot about car setup. We learned a lot about like uh, sponsorship programs. And I mean, everybody just got along and hung out. And I think that was a silver lining to the entire event was all the friendships that were made because there was nothing else to do. Now this event also opened my eyes to the level of car that people are building and I'm definitely going to be leveling up my S197 after I do some remodeling, some upgrades to this garage to make it the proper garage I need to take this car to the next level. And it also motivated me to get my driving to the next level. So next year I'll definitely be at Holly Ford Fest. Now with that being said, we did take a bit of a risk driving from Austin to Kentucky with Hurricane Helene coming in. Uh, the event organizers did a great job at keeping the drivers and their property safe, making sure that everybody had their tents tied down or taken down, and keeping people on and off track during the appropriate times. We saw a lot of consistent rain and not a lot of winds, um, but overall, huge shout out to the organizers. I think everything, despite the weather, was ran extremely smooth. But that's gonna wrap up today's uh, video vlog for Holly Ford Fest 2024. Next on the horizon is SEMA 2024. So if you're going, we'll see you there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.